Hey there, CJ Math students. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, percent concepts today and use mental math. Uh, when using mental math, I want to make two benchmarks. Um, I want to, you guys to recognize the benchmark of 10% and 50%. 50% uh, is obviously half of whatever number we're working with. 10% is usually going to be um, the, the first number or the first two numbers that we're working with. I'll explain what that means in a little bit. On buzz math, questions one through three are very straightforward. Express four fifths as a percent. We can either divide five into four and put decimal, decimal zero, or we can do four fifths and say, let's make that base 10 by saying times two times two and you get eight over 10, so 0.8 or 80%. Right? Uh, 0.81, that's just moved two times to the right and that gives us 81%. And then 0.609, again, no matter how long the number is, it's just two times to the right, so 60.9%. Please use these notes today when you're using BuzzMath. Don't raise your hand and be like, I don't get number three. Look at your notes, look at what we did. So on number four, um, it says use mental math to calculate 15% of 260. So think about what our answer is gonna be. 15% is pretty small um, of 260. So our answer is gonna be way less than what half of 260 is, which is 130. Um, it's gonna be uh, just a very small proportion, right? If I had this as a circle, and the full thing of this was 260, but 100% of it, like this would be our small slice of pie right there, 15%. So we can do this mentally. We can say, all right, what is 10% of 260? And we can say, what's 5% of 260? So when we can go ahead and say, because those add up to 15%, right? Um, so 10% of 260, this is this first number. If you want to do the multiplication, you can. I can prove it to you right here. 260 times 0 0.10, the whole first row would be 0. Uh, lay an egg, the whole second row would be 0, but then 6 and 2, 6. Add it up, you get 26.00, 2 times the right, 26.0. But now if you just want to believe me, 10% of uh, 26. It's just going to be 10% of a number. It will just be the first number if it's two digits long, or this first two numbers if it's three digits long, so 26. 5% of 260 then is just going to be half of what 10% is. So what's half? What's half of 26, right? Because 5 is half of 10. So what's half of 26? It's 13. So add them together. What's 15% now of 260? It's 39. How'd I get that? I added the 6 and the 3, got 9, 2, and 3. I added what 10% of 260 was and what 5% of 260 was. And you get 39. Now you could also do this long ways and you could say, all right, 260 times 0.15 and you would get the same answer, right? But hopefully uh, this new mental math way helps you out a little bit better. So number five, it says, what's 30% of 84? So instead of saying what's 30%, let's just say what's 10% of 84? 840, excuse me. Well, 10% of 840 is just 84, right? And it's just the first two, two numbers of a three-digit number, right? So now if I have 10%, well, I could say, all right, if this is 10%, I could just multiply this number by 3 because 10% times 3 gives me 30%. So then 84 times 3 should give me what 30% of 480 is. Um, and, or, excuse me, 840 is. So 12 carrier 1, 24 plus 5, 252. Ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, 50% of 840 would be about 420, right? That's half of 840. So 252, yeah, that's 30%. That makes, that makes sense. 50% of 200, 50%, you should just be able to say, when asked this, you should say, basically this is saying, what's half? What's half? Sorry of 200, and that's easy, that's 100, all right? You could say what's 10% of 200, and you get 20, and then multiply that by five, but you get the same thing, right? 10% of 200 equals 20, so multiply that by five, you get 50%, multiply this by five, and you get the same thing we got, 100. So there are two different ways you can think about it, all right? Um, another benchmark, write this back up at the top, is 100%, 100% of something is obviously everything, right? So if I give you a, uh, a percentage that is over 100%, first figure out, okay, what's 100% of 200? Well, that's easy. That's the whole thing, right? It's 200. My answer here should be more than 200 because I'm asking for 160% of 200. So now let's say, okay, now what's 10% of 200? That's easy. That's 20, right? The first two numbers. 
Well, let's multiply by that by six because that will give us 60% of 200. And then we multiply this by six and we get 120. Now is 120 my answer? No, because 120 is less than 200, right? It's one, it's 120, it's 200 and 120 added together. So 200 plus 120 gives me my answer of 320. And that makes sense because it's bigger than 200. I asked for a percentage that was more than the whole, 160%, right? Let's go ahead and do what's 300%. So what's 100% of 800? Well, that's simple. That's just 800. That's everything, right? But now let's multiply it by 3 to get to 300%, right? Oops, sorry, not 30. 300% of 800. So just multiply this by 3. What do we get? We get 0, 0, 2,400. I know that's a huge number, and you're like, wait, how can that be possible? Right? We wanted our answer to be bigger than 800 because we wanted 300% of it. Basically, hopefully you're just picking up on a pattern. You just basically multiplied 3 times 8. Right? That's all you did. Right? Um, number 9 is a little bit tricky. It says, use mental math to calculate 12.5% of 24. I showed you the example here to let you know what they were thinking. So they say 25% as a fraction is 1 fourth. So they're basically also saying, hey, 12 and a half is 12.5, which is 1 eighth. So what are they doing in this problem? They're just saying, okay, let's take 1 eighth and multiply it, because that's what the word of is, by 24. 24 over 1, really. When I do that, I can cross cancel and divide them both by 8. I get 1 here and 3 here. What do I get? I get 3. So 12.5% of 24 is 3. And that makes sense because 12.5% of a number is kind of small. And 3 isn't that much of a number, right? Uh, so 3 out of 24, right? If you if you got this on your test, you ex expect, oh man, I'm, I'm going to get a pretty low grade on that test, right? Um, all right. Uh, Jose invested an amount of 3700 at an interest rate of 5%. What will be the interest after a year? Again, please pay attention. I don't want you raising your hand and being like, I didn't know how to do number 9 and 10. It's in here in your notes. So they tell you, you basically you want to use this. You want to find interest, right? They're saying, okay, this equation right here will tell you how to do this. You take your principal, which is the amount you start with, times your rate, which is this percentage, times the time, which is just one year. Okay, so what is that going to be? The principal is 3,700 times 5%, but we can't multiply it by as percent, so we change this to a decimal, 0 0.05, times 0 0.05, times a year, which is just one, right? Um, so I'm pretty sure you can use Google Calculator on this one. Um, if you can't, basically you can just say, okay, what's 10% of 3,700? Well, that's simple, it's 37. So then if I know that that's 10% and 5% is half of 10%, just take 37 and divide by 2. So 2 goes into 37. Um, 1 times 7. Uh, 8 times. Just 16. 1 left over. So 8.5 is your answer. $8.50 is the amount of interest he earns for putting that money in the bank. That's the end of part 1.